Today, I'll talk about the derivation of momentum equation and Navier's or Navier's equation. So, first, I'll start with Newton's second law of motion. So, Newton's second law of motion is net force is equal to mass into acceleration or mass into acceleration is equal to net applied force. So, that is my starting point. Now, here, so Newton's second law in vector form is given by force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, where m is the mass of the fluid particle and a is the acceleration vector which can be expressed as the material derivative of the velocity field u. In fluid dynamics, the acceleration of the fluid particle in the flow field can be expressed as material derivative of the velocity vector u. So, here as a is a vector quantity means acceleration a is the vector quantity it has three components ax ay and az so we can write that acceleration a is equal to axi plus ayj plus azk now a also a can be means a is a acceleration so acceleration can be expressed as the material derivative of the velocity field uh, u so, we can write acceleration is nothing but material derivative of the velocity vector u. So, that is capital du by capital dt. So, now here u is a, the velocity vector. So, that is u is nothing but ui plus vj plus wk. So, now that capital du by capital dt can be written as capital du by capital dt i plus capital dv by capital dtj capital dw by capital dtk. So, that in that material derivative has also three component okay so that is this one this one and this one and is equal to if you write in vectorial form so del u by del d plus del u sorry u dot nabla into u so this is a vector vectorial form so a acceleration term can be expressed in the vectorial form now, in that acceleration of the fluid particle in velocity field can be expressed as that capital du by dt. So, that is that has two path. One is local acceleration path, another is convective acceleration. So, now the acceleration in the x, y and z direction are ax, ay and az. So, ax can be written as a capital du by capital dt that is equal to u del u del x plus v del u del y plus w del u but del z plus del u del, del t a y acceleration in y component so cap is equal to capital d v by capital d t is equal to u del v by del x plus v del v by del y plus w del v by del z plus del v by del t in a z acceleration in z direction capital is equal to capital d w by capital d t is equal to u del w by del x plus v del w by del y plus w del w by del z plus del w by del t. This component represents the total acceleration of the fluid particle combining both local and convective acceleration. Now, Newton's second law in fluid dynamics. So, that we can write uh, as a force is equal to mass into acceleration. That force is a vector quantity. So, it has three part, uh, three component fxi plus fyj plus fzk. So, fx, fy and fz are the three different components in x, y and z direction and m into a, a is the acceleration. So, that can be written as axi plus ayj plus azk. That also can be written in material derivative form. So, that is m into capital du by capital dti plus capital dv by capital dtj plus capital dw by capital dt k and vectorial form is nothing but m into del u del t plus u dot nabla u okay so now if we express if we plug that acceleration ax ay and az so that uh, we can write m into u del u del x plus v del u del y plus w del u del z plus del u del t i and this is y direction acceleration u del v by del x plus v del v by del y plus w del v by del z plus del u by del t j plus u 
del w by del x plus v del w by del y plus w del w by del h del z plus del w by del dk so this is acceleration ax ay and az so now we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration so this is the total acceleration of fluid particle so now if i consider uh, that small uh, fluid particle so force acting on the fluid particle can be described as df is equal to rho dv by capital du by dt so here df is the differential force or you can say small force rho is the density and v is dv is the differential volume and du capital du by dt is the material derivative of the velocity so this equation link the force to to the acceleration term including gravitational pressure and viscous force now here so df is equal to rho dv by capital du by capital dt so this actually mass and this is acceleration now this part we already dis discussed means i already discussed that you can get from previous slide here okay so this is the total term now oh yeah i I'm, I'm coming with the force how many force acting what type of force acting on the fluid particle so here there are two type of force acting on the fluid particle currently i am considering one is body forces and that is called surface forces so body forces is nothing but that uh, gravity act on the body so that we can write rho g dv and surface force here surface force arising from the stress tensors sigma leading to that nabla dot sigma dv so this is the total surface force the test tensor that sigma includes both pressure and viscous con con contribution means pressure force as well as viscous force now if i add that two forces so that total df is nothing but the gravitational force or body force and surface force that is equal to rho that mass into acceleration now here if we write uh, this mass into acceleration in that left hand side and the right hand side is that two force so that we can write that x mass into acceleration is equal to rho g dv plus nabla dot sigma dv now if i take common uh, dv that volume part so that will be volume dv into rho g plus nabla dot sigma now if i dv both side dv dv are common so we can cancel out so finally we will get the equation so rho into capital du by capital dt is equal to rho g plus sigma sorry nabla dot sigma so this equation we got now i will discuss more about sigma and we know already that this acceleration term okay so if you plug together what will be the momentum equation so first uh, i'll go that sigma so we got this equation okay so now here sigma sigma is the stress tensor that that is given by that minus p i plus mu that nabla u plus nabla u transpose so here for newtonian fluid where p is the pressure and mu is the dynamic viscosity now here i i is actually identity matrix and this nabla u is actually the velocity gradient tensor okay and p is the pressure and mu is the dynamic viscosity now if i express sigma sigma as a the tensor sigma is a tensor so it has nine component sigma xx sigma xy sigma xz sigma yx sigma yy sigma yz sigma zx sigma zy sigma zz so here nine components are there so this diagonal component actually the normal stress and other component are actually shear stress now sigma xx can be expressed as minus p plus 2 mu del u by del x sigma xy is equal to mu into del u del y plus del v del x sigma xz is equal to mu into del u del z plus del w del x 
sigma y y is nothing but minus p plus 2 mu and sigma y z is equal to mu del v by del z plus del w del y and sigma z z minus p plus 2 mu del w by del z. Now here that I already told that this diagonal sigma is nothing but normal trace and other are actually shear stress. So here this shear stress follow the systematic uh, symmetric not systematic symmetric properties that symmetric nature of the tensor means sigma x y is equal to sigma y x and sigma x z is equal to sigma z x and sigma y z is equal to sigma z y means if I know the relationship of sigma x y I can easily calculate sigma y x. Similarly, sigma x z and sigma z x, sigma z y is sigma y z and sigma z y. Now, what are what is the physical interpretation of uh, normal trace and shear stress? So, normal trace sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z represent the force per unit area acting normal to the respective plane. This stress contribute to the compression or expansion of the fluid. Shear stress that sigma x y sigma y z and sigma z x represent the force per unit area acting parallel to the plane influencing, influencing the deformation and rotational dynamics of the fluid element. The symmetry of the stress tensor ensure that any torque generated by one component is balanced by its symmetric counterpart. So maintaining the rotational equilibrium of the fluid parcel. This property is foundation in the analysis and modeling of the fluid flows particularly in simulation and calculation involving fluid dynamics and trace analysis. So we know what are the, what is the what are the physical interpretation normal trace and shear stress. Now I am calc I will calculate x direction net force. So that is not shear force. So x component of the net force acting on the cubical volume of the particle so that can be computed as so here if you see so this is x direction force and this is positive direction this is negative direction so negative net is this minus sigma xx or dy dz similarly for this phase and this phase so you can see here that is tau y x or sigma y x another is sigma y x or tau y x plus tau y x dy by right? so this is positive direction this is negative direction so sigma y x plus sigma del of sigma y x del y into del y minus sigma y x into dx dz okay similarly for this uh, front and back so front is like a like this this one and back back means so tau zx so that we can write sigma zx plus del of sigma zx by del z to del z minus sigma zx del x del y now here this term and this term will be cancel out this term and this term will be cancel out this term and this term will be cancel out so finally you get del of sigma xx by del x into del x del y del z del of sigma y x del y into del y del x del z and del of sigma zx by del z into del z del x del y so now if I take common of del x del y and del z so we will get this so this is the net force in the x direction now if I calculate x component of the net force acting per fluid element of the volume dv that that can be computed by dividing del x del y and del z so net force per unit volume will be del of sigma xx by del x plus del of sigma y x by del y plus del of sigma z x by del z. 
now similarly uh, y direction and z direction we will get now that del dot sigma so that is the uh, combination of x component net force plus y component net force and z component net force now as we know that f is equal to m a so f is f has three component similarly acceleration a has three component now if i write each direction most momentum equation so that is rho into capital du by capital dt is that that uh, is equal to so that is rho gx rho gx is nothing but body force and this is the surface force surface force including pressure force as well as that uh, shear force as and normal as a normal trace also so here y direction rho into capital dv by dt so rho gy into that surface force similarly z direction rho of capital dw by dt body force and that is the surface force now if i uh, plug that capital du by dt capital dv by dt and capital dw by dt so we'll get that equation for each direction momentum equation for each direction so that is rho into acceleration is equal to body force and surface force similarly we also get that y direction rho into acceleration of y direction plus body force plus surface force similarly z direction also now if i plugging the velocity term in the normal trace and shear stress so final equation is as follows for x direction rho into acceleration plus this rho gx minus that dp by sorry del p by del x plus mu into del square u del x square plus del square u del y square plus del square u by del z square so we'll get that similarly y direction and z direction will get that equation now if i summarize so navier equation vectorial form so rho into del u by del t plus u dot nabla u is equal to minus the del p plus or, or not del nabla p plus rho g plus mu into nabla square u so now navier stokes equation is nothing but mass into acceleration is equal to net force so mass into acceleration is equal to force so here mass uh, actually fluid density means here that acceleration is per unit volume so that's why rho into that whole term so rho into del u by del t plus u dot nabla u is equal to minus nabla p plus rho g plus mu nabla square u so here rho is fluid density here del u del t is the change of velocity over time u dot nabla u is nothing but convective acceleration and then so this is also called local local acceleration this is convective acceleration then is equal to minus uh, that nabla p or you can say the gradient of p pressure gradient term and plus this term sorry this term actually so that is external force due to the gravity or you can say body force but you need volume plus mu uh, nabla square u so the, it is actually internal stress force with viscous effect so this is actually called the viscous term okay so that's it for navier stokes equation thank you